Hideo Noguchi was born in Inawashiro, Fukushima Prefecture, Japan, in 1876. This medical researcher studied the causes of diseases in Asia before moving to the United States of America. From there, he conducted investigations in the Americas and Europe before coming to investigate the cause of yellow fever in Ghana, where he died in 1928. Recognizing that Africa is facing this scourge, as well as other medical challenges, the government of Japan created the Ideo Nogushi Africa Prize in July 2006 in memory of Dr. Ideo Nogushi, whose faith in progress medical and dedicated activities in Africa remains a model. The award honors individuals with outstanding achievements in the areas of medical research and medical services in Africa. The five-year $1 million award is divided into two categories, medical research honoring individuals and medical services honoring individual and organizations. The first prize was awarded in 2008 to Kenyan Miriam Were for medical services and to Englishman Brian Greenwood for research. In Kenya, Miriam Were is one of the pioneers of the community health service. It all started in the 1970s, at the end of her medical training. She then starts working in a health facility. But she gets bored quickly by signing death certificates for newborns. In this way, she decides to go to the communities to find, with them, the solutions to their health problems. She devotes more than 40 years of her life working in more than 90 villages in Kenya. For me, the solution is the prevention and the promotion of health. But for medical people, it is not exciting to be involved in latrine promotion or food, 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 food promotion and so on. So although my work was good and I was very happy about it, and the government of Kenya recognized the work, but many of my professional colleagues did not think that I was doing serious work. They say it is not academic enough. Academic enough for what? So anyway, the Hideo Noguchi Africa Prize, by getting that prize, it raised a lot of attention to my work in terms of things like building latrine, things like good nutrition for children so that they don't have koshoko, things like worms, things like treating quickly. If you have a pneumonia, you treat it quickly. You find out, you, you teach the mothers how to tell them early pneumonia, and they, they, they go to treatment quickly. So by doing this, you change the norms, you change the community norms. People accept, develop new norms of how to prevent disease and how to promote health. Miriam Were has, for her doctoral thesis, worked on the participation of communities in their own health care. Subsequently, she asked the Kenyan government to have the field staff responsible for carrying out the project seconded by the Ministry of Health so that the results are real. Seeing the potential of the project, the ministry adopted it as Kenya's pilot project in the field of community-based health care. The community health has a long history in this country. I think it started way back in the, in the 70s, the 1970s, as a community-based care. And uh, it has undergone uh, transformation over the years. Uh, and, and we really appreciate our, 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 our goodwill ambassador, our Professor Miriam Were. Uh, for spearheading uh, the community-based uh, care that has today uh, be transformed into now community health services. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's not been easy. It's, in, it's been a very stormy uh, pathway. Uh, but as a country, uh, we have ensured that we have policies, that we have strategies uh, that are, are, are guiding the establishment of of, of community health uh, services. Between 2003 and 2009, Professor Miriam Were, who was the chairperson of the board of directors of the National AIDS Control Council, was very instrumental in pushing the NAC towards not only recognizing the role of communities in our strategy, but also being able to um, deliver, our inf to set up our own infrastructure as an institution to ensure that every constituency in Kenya 
uh, had an HIV and AIDS uh, coordinator and therefore a response that was working as well as ensuring that uh, community information and data was routinely collected so that we could be able to say or identify the contribution of communities towards uh, the goals and the targets because often we have goals and targets that are well met at the level of uh, the ministries of health, uh, but not necessarily always recognizing how much work happens at the community, which is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. In Ngatatek, Kajido County, about 100 kilometers from Nairobi, no deaths were recorded in 2017 in the area of maternal and child health. Yet skilled birth delivery in Kajado County was still low in previous years and was 52% with maternal mortality of 365 per 100,000. In order to attract mothers to the health facility, community health workers planned a day of action led by community health assistant to build a maternal shelter that serves as a waiting area for pregnant women. The structure is a replica of the traditional hut of Masaya woman. The goal is to keep mothers close to the health facility, but also in a culturally similar environment, improving access to skilled care. Sophia, who has just given birth, experienced this one. I was referred for delivery done by community health volunteers. I came to the health center where I gave birth safely and was transferred to the maternal waiting room. I was transferred there because it's friendly. I think there's more privacy, while the hospital delivery room is very big and rather cold. In addition, our loved ones can come to support us in the maternity home. I was able to stay one day and then I was released. My baby and I are in good health. Looking at the maternal waiting home, actually, it has contributed positively to maternal health outcomes in that so far since the maternal waiting home was constructed, we have received 13, 15 mothers who have delivered at their maternal waiting home and uh, we are still marketing the maternal waiting home so that uh, uh, the community. Due to progress in the implementation of community health services, Kenya intends to apply it to its universal health coverage policy aiming to achieve 100% coverage in the country by 2022. Community health volunteers are very important because they are people they s stay together. They are people who are is your neighbor, so they are able to answer questions and they are able to demonstrate uh, the benefit of uh, 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 health insurance. And then with regard, because UHC is three aspects, uh, coverage in terms of quality services, uh, coverage in terms of in, uh, health insurance, and that is financial protection, and then reach of services. So uh, there will be uh, these community health workers will be able to help communities sort out small small issues at the household level before they go to a health center. So that reduces the strain on the health uh, infrastructure system in the country. In 2008, alongside Miriam Were, Brian Greenwood received the Ideo Noguchi Africa Prize for Medical Research. This English researcher has been rewarded for his bold and innovative work on malaria. At a time when the disease was spreading widely across the African continent, killing more than one million people a year, Greenwood helped create and designed effective strategies to fight malaria. He has worked in several African countries, including Burkina Faso, where he helped the Health Research Institute, based in Bobo to implement the seasonal malaria prevention chemo program. The first work took place in Senegal, Ghana, Mali and Burkina, and its results were very encouraging, and it was published. We're able to convince the WHO that this was a strategy that needed to be put in place in asylum countries and this would be achieved 
in 2012 with the adoption of WHO on this study, which is the chemo prevention of seasonal malaria that occurs with the combination of amodeacine and sulfadoxine perimetamine. So that was the purpose of our meeting with Professor Greenwood and on this momentum. We have continued the collaboration until today, and we are still in partnership. In fact, the Chemio Seasonal Malaria Prevention Program was adopted in 2012 by the WHO, the World Health Organization. It is currently implemented in 11 African countries. This is to administer a molecule to children under five for four months during the period of high malaria transmission between August and November in Burkina Faso. Before the implementation of chemo malaria prevention in Burkina Faso, malaria was the cause of 63% of hospitalization and 50% of death in hospitals in the country. The prevalence rate among children under five was 46 percent. After a pilot study in 2014, chemo prevention of seasonal malaria was scaled up in 2015 in 17 districts of Burkina Faso for 900,000 children under five years old. We know that this has had a turning impact around at least 40 percent reduction in malaria case. The study was conducted only at the level of the upper basin, but we are not the only African countries. We have other countries, such as Senegal, Mali, that have also conducted this kind of study, and the combined results of these different countries have allowed the WHO to adopt this strategy. A high level of coverage was achieved in 2015 in terms of chemo, prevention of seasonal malaria. At least 89% of children under five received four treatments, according to the health card. Unde is 100 kilometers northeast of Popodulaso, the economic capital of Burkina Faso. This village was part of the areas where the prevalence rate of malaria was very high and therefore one of the beneficiaries of the program since 2014. Today, the prevalence rate of malaria has halved, as have malaria-related consultations. Our assessment is that in the intervention areas, the age groups, the number of episodes related to malaria on these children has decreased considerably. That's what we can say. As these are study samples, I do not think it is appropriate now to extrapolate, but the first observation, these children have less and less malaria, and these are our first impressions. The results in fewer consultations, for example, for children and the five in these intervention areas. Today they intervene within our sanitary districts and the observation is clear. Children who are under the care have fewer episodes of malaria than those who are not in the strings. All this means that these are interventions that could be capitalized on the scale. Now the Bobo Dulasso Health Research Institute is working to stop the transmission of malaria among mosquitoes. As soon as the child is going to take the combined treatment, we will do a venous sampling and we will offer blood to the mosquitoes that we have produced here at the IRSSS center. This amounts to having a mosquito take a treatment, since we cannot ask them to be present every hour, morning, noon, evening, as in humans. We take advantage of the fact that man has more molecules and that these molecules are still circulating in the blood. We take this blood and offer it to mosquitoes that have already been infected. So if these molecules actually have an activity on the development of the parasite, we will observe it seven days later by dissecting the mosquito and looking into its stomach. Once the stomach is observed and our molecule has actually had a blocking activity, the stomach will not be infected because there is no parasite. On the other hand, 
If the molecule has not acted, we'll see in the stomach parasites, circular forms showing that the mosquito is infected. In addition, the IRSS is experimenting with a new program that combines seasonal malaria prevention chemo with a recently approved WHO malaria RTSS vaccine, which has been tested in four African countries. We are seeing better prevention with the vaccines. Vaccine prevention is something that is ahead of time and is evolving. We talked about the results of the RTSS vaccine, which is currently one of the most advanced vaccines and which gave very convincing results in phase three, with an efficiency which turns around 40% for the three years after the first year vaccine. And remember that we have a protection of 49% of those who have been vaccinated. But be careful. When we take the first year of vaccination, we still have a proportion of protection that is very important, which is more than 50%. And nearly 70 vaccine candidates are being tested today. The second Ideo Nogushi Africa Prize was awarded in 2013 to Belgium Peter Payot for research and to Uganda, Alex Contiho for medical services. Peter Payot has been recognized for his crucial research on endemic diseases in much of Africa, including HIV, Ebola, tuberculosis, and gonorrhea. As for Alex Contiho, he has created HIV prevention, care and treatment models that brings professional rigor to medical services and empower patients, families, and communities to manage the disease. His efforts have focused on the needs of the poor in Africa, providing AIDS care to some 200,000 people in the remotest corners of Uganda. It was a big, big honor and recognition to be awarded the Hideo Noguchi uh, Africa Prize. Uh, what it changed was really to recognize that I won the award uh, for the work that I did with very many others to scale up HIV treatment uh, across Africa, uh, but in my case, particularly in Uganda. And what changed was, to, was my mindset to see how I can take those lessons and apply them to other conditions that are just as serious and just as debilitating to the populations of Africa. And so I've put my mind both to how do we scale up treatment, say, for cancer or for mental health, but also to understand what are the limiting factors and starting to work on improving the supply and the training of midwives in Africa. I'm looking at what are the things that limit the production of midwives uh, in Uganda, in Rwanda, and what kind of skill sets do the midwives bring to the health workforce. Uh, perhaps also in honor of my mother who's a midwife, but also because I know that here in rural areas often midwives do much more work than doctors because there are very few doctors here and it's the midwives who are delivering babies, it's the midwives who are resuscitating babies, it's the midwives who are taking care of immunization and so on and so forth. The model is now adopted worldwide and allows the poor to get treatment close to home. Dr. Contijo is now working to expand this type of service to treat other diseases in Africa. Today in Rwanda, he's helping the government to restore the health system, which was affected by the 1994 genocide. So the Rwanda government has done a tremendous job since the genocide against the Tutsis 24 years ago to rebuild Rwandan society and in particular to rebuild the health system, which was in Tatars uh, uh, 24 years ago. And since then, Rwanda is leading the charge in Africa to hit and exceed many targets. They reached their Millennium Development Goals for Health, and now they're tackling the Sustainable Development Goals and Universal Health Care uh, coverage. So it's a pleasure and a privilege to work hand in hand with the Rwanda government. The motto we use here is to support government to fit in with government's vision and mission and to provide additional support where government identifies that it needs help. This is a model that would work very well in many African countries, but it does require that government takes the health of their population seriously, as the Rwanda government does here. It was at Rinkwau, 100 kilometers east of Kigali, in Kayonza district, that we found Dr. Alex Kantio. Here he runs the NGO Partners in Health, which 
works mainly in this rural community on non-communicable diseases and HIV AIDS. In particular, he has worked to translate the model applied to HIV AIDS in Uganda, which earned him the Ideo Noguchi Africa Prize in the fight against other diseases in Rwanda, especially in the most remote and difficult areas. Before we got this support, the catchment area, the Wingham Hospital is operating, had many problems. Uh, children were dying, some of them even were coming here with complication of disease due to malaria. Uh, the community health workers, they have been trained even for population sensibilization. Patients were not even uh, giving uh, the money for health insurance, but these days through those community health workers, they were sensibilized and now they, they are providing the health insurance. Dans le cadre de, de soutenir le gouvernement rwandais à as part of the Rwandan government's support to decentralize health care to the Rwandan population, we have tried to set up chronic care services close to their homes. Patients can have access to primary health care at the health center with a nurse who has been trained in chronic care in order to treat the patient and do a good follow-up and also this helps patients to be taken in charge in time. It also decreases patients' perceptions of continuity of care. Venisi has HIV AIDS. This inhabitants of Rinkwau suffered for a long time from severe diarrhea and loss of appetite. In 2009, she started treatment while her health was already badly deteriorated. Every day, community health workers came to her home to administer her medication. Currently, I feel good. I regain my strength and I get to work well. Before, I had stomach pains. I lacked appetite and suffered from diarrhea every time I ate. Today, I am well and my child is HIV negative because when I gave birth, my child was fed milk power. He was monitored. Every three months, I had to go to the hospital to know his status. This program helped me a lot. Success stories of the Venice genre have been recorded in other parts of Rwanda, where Dr. Contijo spoke with the NGO partners in health he runs. In Butaro, 10 kilometers from the border with Uganda and about 100 kilometers north of Kigali and 2,200 meters above sea level, okay. is the first and only rural cancer treatment in Rwanda and East Africa. Since its opening, the center has received some 7,000 poor patients. Before this, I could not go to the fields. I could not even raise my hands. Now I can work and earn enough to support my family. My health has really improved. The real way in which we can serve the whole of Rwanda is to replicate this cancer service across the country. And government of Rwanda has plans to have four centers of excellence in Rwanda. This was the first one. Already there is a second one in Chigali at Kanombe Hospital and there are two others planned. But the doctors and the nurses who will work in these other centers come here to learn. They come here to be trained and they come here to get experience. And so those are the ways in which eventually we will serve all of Rwanda and beyond Rwanda because we get patients from Congo and Burundi and Uganda and even Tanzania. The work of the Ideo Nogushi Africa Prize winners has helped improve health and access to medical services for millions of Africans. In 2019, two more people will receive the award for its third edition. <laughs>